Life can be hard to comprehend Every day with a broken heart to mend Going round in many circles The path is lined with many hurdles But then comes the missing piece You are found last in peace A broken heart was mended Here comes my bride Life can be hard to comprehend Every day with a broken heart to mend Going round in many circles The path is lined with many hurdles But then comes the missing piece New life and lasting peace The broken heart was mended Here comes the groom Here comes the bride Here comes the groom Here comes my baby oh Our love has just begun From the very moment I saw you I saw this much made in heaven See what God has joined together Let no man put asunder Here comes a bride Here comes a groom Here comes a bride Here comes a groom Here comes a bride Here comes a groom Here comes my baby, oh, our love has just begun From the very moment I saw you, I saw this much made in heaven See what God has joined together, let no man put asunder Here comes my bride, here comes a groom Here comes a bride, here comes a groom Baby, my lovey, a perfect gift from God Himself. I've been searching for you, searching for a long time. But here comes the missing piece. You are found last in peace. A uh, broken heart is mended. Uh, here comes my bride. My baby, my lovey, a perfect gift from God Himself. I've been searching for you, searching for a long time But then comes the missing piece You are from last in peace My broken heart was mended Here comes my groom Here comes the bride Here comes the groom Here comes my baby, oh Love has just begun From the very moment I saw you I saw this much made in heaven See what God has joined together Let no man put asunder Here comes my bride Here comes my groom Here comes my bride Here comes a groom Here comes my bride Here comes my groom Here comes my baby, oh, our love has just begun From the very moment I saw you The moment I saw you Here comes my bride Here comes my groom Here comes my bride Here comes my groom the best and you want to be blessed we will be catapulting you into his dog the best and you want to be blessed we will be catapulting you into his dog star canel canel it's classroom with apostle abeku okan your counselor your brother your friend your everything today is another day and it's a wonderful day we just thank god 
for the goodness, the grace, and the mercy he has given us. We've been learning so many things about marriage over the weeks. This is the third edition, and today we're going to look at how to win a man's heart. How to win a man's heart. I've taken this very special topic because I've seen a lot of people struggling with respect to um, marriage, with respect to the fact that a, a lot of ladies, I mean, how they can settle in marriage with a man. But many also do not understand why things go the way it goes, and we need to discuss, discuss it. So let me again welcome you to the channel. Anytime you come to Facebook, do well, and then go to the Canal uh, TV page, look at the videos, several videos are there. You're going to love everything we do at Canal TV. And for the marriage classroom, this is the place you will love. Now, let's go into the matter. Let's go into the matter regarding settling with a man in marriage or winning the heart of a man. Winning the heart of a man. Let me first of all say that the heart of a man cannot be won just anyhow. There are certain things that almost every man is looking for. All men. When it comes to women, there are certain qualities men are looking for. So, if you want to settle with a man, you need to have that understanding so that you can settle with the right man, of course, and be happy in marriage. Maybe you've, you've, you've tried to marry the man, or even four or five men have come your way. You just couldn't marry them, or they couldn't marry you because things didn't go as you would have wanted it to go. Now, I want you to understand that here is the last stop. Just pay attention to me and do what I'm going to tell you to do. And that will end it. That will end it. Yes. If you are going to take this advice, if you are going to take this counsel seriously, and then, you know, have a, assess your own life, find out where you've got it wrong, and then correct it, and find out where you are doing right, and then you add up to it because you should know that your, your best is not yet reached. So everything you do, you can do it better. And if you are lacking, you have to correct it. So we are looking at how to win a man's heart. First of all, I want you to note that before you win a man's heart, this, listen to this, very, very serious. Before you win a man's heart, First of all, the man must love you 50%. When I say 50%, I'm talking about 50% of the, of the analysis we are going to do. Depends on the love of the man. If a man doesn't love you, no matter what you do, you can't win his heart. There is no magic. There is no attitude. There is no character. First of all, love is the foundation of everything. So if a man marries you without loving you, anything you do will not be happy, you know, will not please him. He will not be happy with you. So he must first of all be a man who has that interest in you. And that interest, however it will come, usually depends on the man. Because there are some men, they don't like a fair woman. There are some men who naturally like fair women. There are some, if you are slim, they don't like you. They want the slim person. There are some, they don't want a, a particular tribe. So if you are from that tribe, or if you, are, if you are dark, or if you are fair, if you fall into the category of the woman he doesn't want, no matter what you do, he would not love you. Therefore, take note of it. You shouldn't burden yourself and trouble yourself and worry yourself by feeling guilty and punishing yourself for a man not settling down in you as far as marriage is concerned. Sometimes, and even most of the time, it depends also on the basic choice of the man. So the man you are with, what is his basic choice? Does he like your tribe? 
Does he like your, your, your color? Does he like your shape? That, what does he like naturally about you? If there is no proud connection, natural connection, then don't overburden yourself. Don't overburden yourself. But let us assume that you've met a man who loves you dearly. Yes, he, he loves you dearly. The fact that he loves you dearly doesn't mean he will marry you. Note that. It doesn't mean he will marry you. But it means that there is a 50% chance or even more for him to marry you. But the rest of the chances, the 50% that would let him marry you would depend on some of the things we are going to talk about. So if you want to settle in a marriage, take this serious. Before I proceed, let me say this. There are some things that you as a woman, when you do, a man will not marry you. It's a fact. There are a lot of women who are struggling to marry. And their errors come under, under some of these things I'm going to mention. I'm not saying every woman who is not married, you know, has this challenge. No. What I'm saying is that these challenges actually trouble the chances of many women and prevent them from marrying. That is why you need to pay attention to them. First of all, you need to have an understanding. One, that beauty or look does not win a man's heart. Beauty or look does not win a man's heart. And yet, said the what here? J, you know, oh body, ni bahani, a small boy, chimi. You get what I'm talking about? The body today, we are actually displaying body. Women are display, displaying their breast, their buttocks. You know, it, it looks as if today, if you have uh, uh, plenty uh, back, you know, if your back is heavy, then you are the man, uh, the woman every man is looking for. That is not true. That is not true. In fact, men who are, who are intelligent, men who mean business, men who have purpose, they don't go for a woman because of a buttocks. No. Not even the amount of breasts she's carrying. You can use that to arouse him and entice him sexually, but you can't use it to win him into marriage. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Beauty, the Bible says, is fleeting. Beauty is fleeting. Beauty cannot be relied upon. Beauty cannot be trusted. Your beauty can win the man's mind. His mind. His mindset. Once he sees it, that is beautiful. And you know, men use their eyes a lot. So once he sees your beauty, he will be carried away. But that doesn't mean his heart has received you. He can use his mind to chase you. He can use his mind to come after you, but his heart would not yet be there. So don't be, don't be deceived by your beauty. And then don't try to win a man's heart by beauty. Yes, you have to look good. If you don't look good, a man will not be attracted to you. You can't dress anyhow, you know, keep your nails anyhow, put up any attire. I mean, you have your hair anyhow and think that doesn't matter. It does matter a lot. However, that is not one of the foundations that would cause a man's heart to be won over for you. So take note of it. Don't let beauty, don't let your beauty come in your way. Are you aware that a lot of beautiful women are not married? Are you aware? What do you think is the reason? If beauty is what gets a woman into marriage, then why is it that a lot of beautiful women go to the prayer camps, go to the, uh, uh, go, you go to wherever there is a promise for marriage. You will see that the people who are looking for marriage are women who are very beautiful. What happened? Beauty is not in the equation. It can win his mind, but not his heart. So take note. Second, the push, I call something the push effect or the self-imposing effect. Now, there are some women, in Chi, we have a language called in Shishihon, 
Oh, but they know what she said now. Sometimes falling in love with a man, it doesn't mean you should be pushy. Okay? You love the man, you wish you would marry him, but don't, you know, impose yourself. Don't be pushy. Don't act as if uh, uh, you are desperate for marriage. You are desperate to be with a man. There are a lot of men, when they see that you are desperate, they would take, you know, they would take you for granted. And, and your desperation can make you vulnerable. And they will take advantage of your vulnerability. At the end of the day, they will have sex with you and then they will just abandon you. At the end of the day, they will just take advantage of you and break your heart. So as a woman, you must have an emotional strength where even when you so desire, you have a limit to which you avail yourself. You must be strong. You must be, you must be determined that, yes, this is a man I want. This is a man who loves me, I know. This is a man I'm going to marry. But I'm not going to be too pushy. I'm not going to overexert myself, making myself too vulnerable as if I can't do without him. It's good for, for the man to know that you love him that much and you want to marry him. But be careful how you present yourself as a lady. Sometimes you do the lady things, not too much of it, but it's normal, okay? It's normal. But you don't also overdrag that. Because some men too, when they realize you, you are overstretching them, and you seem not to be serious, they'll go away. Yes, they will go away. So you must have an open arm, a readiness to receive him. A readiness to receive him. But don't be desperate. There is a difference um, having a readiness to marry and being desperate to marry. So don't be desperate. Relax, trust God, and know that things will work out for you. The next thing I want you to note is this. Is this. Take it, take it. This serious. Just look at me carefully and I'm going to mention it. It is sex. Sex doesn't win a man's heart. Sex can only win a man's lust, but not his heart. The heart of a man is the person he is. And therefore, when he wants to marry, he wants to settle with a person who will give value to his person. So if you want to use sex to win a man, you're going to lose, lose him actually. First of all, I told you, make sure 50% of the game is already played with regard to the fact that he loves you. The rest of the 50% that you are working towards has nothing to do with giving him sex. No. When the Bible says sex before marriage is very important, there are a lot of good reasons. A lot of good reasons. Because when you meet somebody and you have sex with the person, the chances of you thinking that because of the sex, you people are not, not one, or you people can marry, or even you people are married, is high. And that brings a lot of deception. That is why when relationships break apart, uh, many women will go saying the man uh, has, has cheated or has, you know, taken advantage of her, or has disappointed her. Now, if there were not, there was no sexual relationship, how would you feel cheated? Okay, so please take note that sex doesn't win a man's heart. Don't use your sex organ as a bait to get a man, as an instrument to win a man. Don't be deceived. Men naturally want sex. When a man gets close to you, the, the, there is a higher chance that he would want to have sex with you. But that even doesn't mean he loves you. Yes, a lot of men are having sex without love. Because to a man, sex is an act for self-satisfaction. But, but to a woman, sex is part of the expression of love. Men don't see it that way. That is why a man can you know, be with his wife, love his wife so much, and still have sex with other women and would come back and love his wife that much 
But a woman, immediately a woman has sex with another man, another man other than her husband, it means that her love, to a large extent, is no more with her husband. But for a man, it's a different thing. So ladies, don't use sex to win a man's heart. It doesn't work that way. Else, you fall into his trap of deception. Talking about sex, the next point we talk about is pregnancy. Is pregnancy. There are some churches, there are some churches, you might not know them, but they are there. I know some of them. When in the church, when a woman gets pregnant by mistake, maybe through fornication, the man is forced to marry the woman. And they believe that. That is a faith they believe. And there are also some men, or some women who assume that as long as I have sex with this man and I get pregnant for him, he's going to marry me. But I want to let you know this, that pregnancy doesn't win a man's heart. Pregnancy, getting pregnant for a man will not bring him into your life as a woman. So don't use pregnancy to bait a man. If a man doesn't love you and he tells you, get pregnant for me and we will marry, it's a lie. It's a lie. Be very careful. It could be a trap. If you're not careful, if he loves you, if he loves you and you get pregnant, yes, there is a chance that you're going to, uh, uh, he can marry you. But you don't have to, you know, you know, take, you don't, you don't have to make yourself that vulnerable to buy into the lie of get pregnant for me and let me marry you. You know what that means? It means that he doesn't love you, but he wants a child. And he loves the child, not you. So as long as you can get pregnant for him, he's okay. At the end of the day, he has his child. So even if he marries you or he doesn't marry you, the most important thing is that he wants a child, not a wife. You need to marry a man who wants a wife, not a child. Do you know you can marry a man and uh, you, you might not give birth? It's not everybody who has given birth. Of course, I know people who have married years and they don't have children. And yet they are happily married. They are happily married and there is no problem. Why? They didn't marry for children. They married for love. The man married the woman because he loves the woman. Not because he wants a child. So if you are going to marry a man because he wants a child and he's promising you get pregnant for me so that I will marry you, you are in danger. Be very, very careful. And you yourself, don't use pregnancy to win a man's heart. It won't work. Don't use money. The next one is money. Money. There are some women who are financially good. Some are not even financially good, but they are good givers. And they assume that when they give the man money, when they sponsor the man, the man will fall for them. No, no, no. You can take a loan and give it to a man. You can give all your business, your bank money to a man. You can do everything if he doesn't love you. That will not win his heart. So giving a man money is not the answer to winning his heart. You must be sure that this man respects me, he honors me, and above all, he loves me and is ready for me before you can commit yourself to him. If that is not there, please don't try to bait him with money. After all, he is not a commodity and you are not going to have him to make him a commodity. You are, no, no, no. You want a husband. So you must note that. Then, number six. Number six. The sixth point I'm raising is pretense. Don't pretend. Okay? You can't win a man's heart by pretending. There are women who pretend a lot. She can pretend to be who she is not. Pretend to be humble. Pretend to be caring. Pretend to be this. Pretend to be that. Pretend to be prayerful. She knows you love prayer. And therefore, she is going to pretend to, to love prayer. She is going to pretend to be a good Christian. No. Don't pretend to win a man's heart. Be who you are. Let a man love you because he has seen who you are and is ready to settle with you. You have your weakness. 
Sometimes let him see your weakness. Don't worry. You have given birth. You, are, you have given birth already. And you want to marry this man. Don't pretend you've never given birth. No. Be honest that you have a child. Show the child to the man. If he wants to marry you, he will marry you not when you hide your child. So don't hide your daughter. Don't hide your son. Don't hide your children because you want to marry a man. Don't pretend. Be yourself. Okay? Be yourself. And that is very, very important. The next point is don't put a man in competition. You see, a man will not win your heart when he visits you and you are in your conversation, you're always acting as though there are other men who are chasing you, other men who are better, other men who are giving you hope. Eh, Kweku even, you know, comes here with a car. Kweku even comes here with a car and then he wants me, but I said no and all that stuff. You are trying to create that kind of picture for him. No, don't do that. Don't do that. A man will not marry you if you put him in competition. It, it actually discourages a lot of men. Let me add these two points, then we go for break. From the break, we will talk about what exactly wins a man's heart. Now, the next one is don't challenge him, okay? Don't challenge a man. If you want to win a man's heart, don't try to be the kind of women who have come today. They are wiser than anything the man says. They have a better option. They are always challenging always proving that they are better, they have the best alternative, and always running the man's wisdom, the man's contribution down. If you do that, he's just going to look at you and say, hey, and then pony. No, he might run away from you. Then the last one before the break is outing. Woman, do you like outing? If you want to win a man's heart, it is not, let's go here, let's come here, there is a program here. No, that is not it. So, if you want to win a man's heart, we will look at the things that will help you to win a man's heart. You will have, um, I will be reading your comment, so please leave a comment, please share, share also, and let's continue the conversation. God bless you so much. Let's go up for a break, and after the break, we're going to continue. If you want the best, and you want to be blessed, we will be God supporting you.
Kenford, uh, Kenford, Anna, God bless you so much. God bless you so much, man of God. Uh, Kenford, you are also watching. Uh, say, I strongly believe some ladies are in the strong room waiting to know how to win their men's heart. Yes, yes, the ladies are ready and I believe they are enjoying. God bless you so much. Yes, so when you come on the channel, please leave, leave um, a message. We'll read your message. Let's know you are here. And also share, please share, share and let's, this, let's have a wonderful uh, time. Yes, together. We are talking about how to win a man's heart. I've mentioned a lot of things that uh, when you do, you will not win a man's heart. First of all, I said that 50% of the effort must come from the man's love. Once he loves you, you are 50% through. If he doesn't love you, no matter what you do, he won't appreciate. Then, I talk about look. Uh, your look and your beauty doesn't necessarily win a man's heart. Then we have the push effect where you are being imposing, where you are being imposing or imposing yourself. Then we have the sex, using sex to win a man's heart. It doesn't work that way. You don't use pregnancy to trap a man. You don't use money. You don't pretend. You don't put a man in competition. And then you don't challenge a man and think that you win his heart into marriage. If you're also interested in outing, that is not also the key. Let's go to the keys that would win a man's heart. I want to repeat before I go to the keys that win a man's heart. A man's heart. I want to repeat that first of all, the man must love you. First of all, the man must love you. If he doesn't love you, marrying him is a dangerous thing. Don't do that. Don't ever marry a man who doesn't love, no matter how much you love him. So, we have talked about that. Let's go to the first point. How to win a man's heart. One, you must be a woman who fears the Lord. A woman who fears the Lord. Do you know, most of the men, even if he doesn't fear God, even if he doesn't uh, um, go to church, he would more likely want to marry a man who knows the Lord and fears the Lord. Yes, he, he will want to marry a woman who knows the Lord and fears the Lord. Do you know why? The reason is that people do not really like what they do. They want change. And normally people want to connect to people who can help them change. So if a man is about to marry you, he would want to see that you can be a source of inspiration, a source of hope, a source of change for him. And your relationship with God can give him that hope. I've spoken to a lot of men who want to marry and the first thing they mention is that I want a woman who fears the Lord. Not only the woman. Sometimes women think that they are the only people who want to marry men who fear the Lord. But men also want to marry women who fear the Lord. So you must be a woman who fears the Lord. Don't just pretend to be a Christian. Be a true Christian. Fear the Lord. Give your time, your love, and your attention to the Lord. Commit yourself to the scriptures. Commit yourself to, you know, the Christian values that would let a man know that he is building a good home if he should marry you. Don't just live any life and assume he's going to marry you. And if the man fears the Lord, then there is a, a greater chance that he will want to see that you also fear the Lord. So the fear of the Lord is important. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 31, the, the last verse, the Bible says, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. And the Bible was talking about the virtuous woman. And the Bible says, who can find the virtuous woman? After talking about the virtuous woman and her quality, Solomon ended by saying that the woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. You know what it means? It means that a virtuous woman is a woman who fears the Lord. Any woman who doesn't fear God, any woman who is not committed to the Lord, is not a virtuous woman. When we say fear God, it doesn't mean that you should be a religious fanatic. It doesn't mean that you should be somebody who spent 24 hours in the church room praying. It doesn't mean that you should be somebody who has no time for yourself, for business, and 
and for and for education and for building your home but all your time is going to preach morning afternoon evening or going for prayers morning afternoon evening that is not what we are talking about when we talk about a woman who fears the lord we are talking about a woman who has reverence respect for the things of the kingdom of god we are not also talking about a woman who dresses anyhow in the name of church you see take note of it take note of this the fact that you don't put on earring doesn't mean you fear the lord the fact that you have duku you cover your head with scarf every 24 7 doesn't mean you fear the lord the fact that you wear long dress doesn't mean you fear the lord fear the lord is not a religious thing it's a relationship you have with god that is so evident when people come close to you, they get to know that this woman has so much respect, reverence for the Lord and the things of God. A woman who fears the Lord naturally would love others. So if you are cantankerous, if you like fighting, you like complaining, you like revenge, if you have other attitude that doesn't come under the fear of the Lord or a person who fears the Lord, then you are missing it. That is not the fear of the Lord. A person who fears the Lord, a woman who fears the Lord, has so much care for others, has so much care for children, has so much care for what belongs to others. She is not self-centered. She is not selfish. She is not self-willed. She is not a person who wants everything for herself and to herself. There are some women, when you marry them, you should be sure that you are no more going to be able to care for any other person. Everything has to come to them. When a man comes close to you and he realizes that you think too much of yourself, you are self-centered, the things of God, the children of God, and other you know, factors regarding human beings are not your priority. And the man is a reasonable person. I promise you, he will not find you the right person to marry so fear of god is one thing that can win a man's heart but hear this the fact that you fear god doesn't mean a man will marry you automatically another thing also comes in and that is one of the most important thing every man is looking for and that is respect 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 when i say sorry when i say respect i want you to note that I've heard several men, I've read several books, I've listened to several uh, motivational speakers and marriage counselors, and I've listened to men, and every one of them is saying one thing, that the most important thing to a man is respect. Obuo, a woman who respects a man will win the man's heart. Have you noticed that um, many house helps have been able to win the heart of their mistress's husbands yes because the house help will respect the man more than the wife would do so if you are a woman and you want to win a man's heart the one principle that you must never forget is respect learn to respect a man in fact in our traditional setting as africans if a man is even two years old, as a woman, you must respect him. Give him that kind of respect. Don't just open your mouth and talk to a man anyhow. Even if he's an ordinary man. Even if you don't, he's not the person you want to marry. Even if he's a man on the street. Because if a man is traveling with you, a man you want to marry, for example, is traveling with you, and then another man, that's something against you and you rise against that man you insult him you 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 disgrace him you mistreat him the man who wants to marry you will begin to ask himself that is this is this the woman that i want to marry of course he will begin to advise himself and he will not marry you so if you want to win a man's heart then what you need to do very importantly is to respect a man and respect that very man also very highly. There was, there was a woman, um, even a wedding, a wedding um, ceremony, 
And then at the, at, the, at the chapel, the pastor called the woman to come to the podium. And when the, when the woman stood up, she realized that the, the man, the groom, had stepped on her gown. Immediately, she saw that the man, the man's leg was on her gown. She just said, Kwasia. In other words, stupid. Immediately, he said, she said Kwasia to the man. The man stood from the auditorium and left. Nobody knew why he left. They went after him. He never talked. Until days later, and he said that the reason I called off the marriage is simply because this is what the woman did. She insulted me. And I told myself, if she can insult me today, what shows that she will not do it when we marry? So a man wants to see that you respect him so that he will settle down with you. But if you don't respect him and you are the, I know my right, I know my right kind of woman, a woman who thinks she knows so much and she can answer back and she can challenge and she can prove herself in such a manner that will discourage the man, then I promise you marriage is going to be very difficult. So you must learn to respect men or respect a man and of, of course men respect a man so that when a man is settling down with you he will settle down from his heart the next point is humility humility woman learn to be humble you see when you are humble there is there is a magic uh there is a magic about humility <laughs> I, I'm laughing because Ken Ford is saying something here. He says, Apostle, I'm afraid, but I think at this point, some ladies are not happy with you. Sure, sure. You see, uh, you need to be happy with me because I'm bringing out a fact. I'm not saying that every woman who doesn't, who is not married, you know, doesn't respect or whatever. But this is a serious issue. This is a serious issue. And I'm encouraging you, ladies, because if I want to marry you, I must see that at least you respect me. And then the point I'm on, humility. You must be humble. Stop sitting on your white horse and expecting the man to settle with you. No. Learn to be humble. I've seen women who are, who are making it financially, making it in the corporate world, and they are very humble. I've seen rich women who are humble. Yes. The fact that a woman is, corp uh, is a corporate woman, the, uh, the fact that a woman uh, is rich or she looks good doesn't mean she is not humble. There are women who are very, very humble. And let me remind you, I'm not saying if a woman is not married, it means she is not humble or she doesn't respect. I'm only telling you some of the things that men look for when they want to marry. And humility is one of them. To be humble means that you must not overrate yourself. You must not see yourself above what you ought to see yourself. Humility is a key. Your ability to be humble will make the man to see you as a jewelry, as a person on whom his heart can trust. But if you are not humble, if you are arrogant, if you are the type that you don't care what you say to people. If you are the type that you always want to go after the catch and give it back. If you are the type who would um, always want to prove that you are superior to the man. Even superior to other human beings. Then he is going to be very, very careful if he wants to marry you. So you must learn to be humble. Very humble. If you really want to Marry. It's very, very important. There are some ladies, when um, you advise them to submit themselves, they go like, hey, me, I can't be stupid or I can't be a fool to a man. Lady, listen to me. If you don't want to humble yourself, if you don't want to submit yourself, don't think of marriage. No, not in our African setting. As even when you marry, you are going to destroy it. Because humility sustains a marriage. 
Humility will cause a man's heart to go out for you. So learn to be humble. And let me promise you, I will pray for you. If you are a woman and you are watching me and you are not married, I'm going to pray for you. Because it's not only the lesson. I will tell you something. Don't go. Don't go. Stay along. I'm going to tell you something just after this. I'm going to tell you something. Then I will pray with you. Now, if you are not humble, even when you marry, you will destroy the marriage. Humility is thinking good of others, not over exalting yourself above others, respecting and honoring the man, honoring his family, honoring you know, even people who offend you, how you treat them. That is a mark of humility. There is this problem I have. I do see or hear people say, I'm going to speak my mind. And when they're about to speak their mind, they begin to say what I call trash. They use words that in their right sense, they will not use. They put away all respect and honor, all reverence for your personality. And they say what they feel like saying. And after saying it, they, 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 they go about saying, I've spoken my mind. And I begin to ask, when you are speaking your mind, is it? every word that is in your mind, then you have, I'm sorry, a very filthy mind. Is it, is it lack of respect, lack of humility, lack of value that is in your mind? No. Whenever you are speaking your mind, you must use words that are, the Bible says, seasoned with grace. That when the hearer hears it, the hearer gets to know you are not happy and yet you are speaking with wisdom. You, you are not pleased with what has happened, and yet your approach is full of grace. That wins a man's heart. So take note of it. Take note of it. Humility is important. The next one, the last one I will talk about is service. Learn to serve. If you want to win, win a man's heart, if you want to win a man's heart, you must be a woman who is committed to building a home, committed to service, committed, committed to caring for others and even caring for the man i'm not saying go and sleep in his house i'm not saying go and stay with him like you are you are his wife and cook for him wash for him do this do that for him and then you 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 we say that is service. that is not what i'm saying but look at this even in your mother's house you must be a woman who is committed to serving in the church you must be committed to serving wherever you find yourself you must be committed to serving the cause of others. To serve means that you must be purpose-driven. Can I repeat myself? To serve means you must be purpose-driven. A woman must be purpose-driven. And then when a man sees you, knows that this woman can bring something on the table. If you are bringing nothing to the table, then what is the proof that if he marries you, he's going to also benefit? Because marriage should not be a one-way affair. And a man should not marry you just because you are a woman. No, there should be other reasons, other things that should come to the table. He must know that he's married a woman who fears the Lord, a woman who respects, a woman who is humble, and a woman who serves. A woman who serves is a person who is in ministry. When I say ministry, I don't mean preaching. I don't mean standing behind the pulpit. I don't mean going about, you know, carrying the Bible. That is not what I mean. I mean that a person who is committed to the good of others, a person who is committed to the good of the man, the man himself that you are, you are connecting with, or even there is no man, the man who is standing behind watching you should know that you are somebody who is humble, who is serving, who is ready to give herself to the good of the marriage or the relationship. God bless you so much. Now, I want to pray for you, um, but give me your, your comment. Uh, Pastor Ken, thank you. I'm seeing Imaki. Imaki, God bless you so much, Ima. Yes. Uh, Pastor Ken, today I'm here with you. Thank you so much. He said, wow, another bombshell. Humility is a burden on a lot of women. Yes, a lot of women, a lot of women are not ready to humble themselves. And that is so bad. Let me, you just reminded me, Pastor Ken. Um, sorry, and this is a fact. 
This is a fact. The fact that you have a vagina doesn't mean a man would marry. You see, don't, that is not the point. Every woman has a vagina. I said it in my book, Vedmatics. But not every, every woman has humility. So don't think that all that a man will get from you is sex. No. Humility is key. Many women are not humble. So if you're a woman and you are humble, in fact, you are, you are a wonderful woman. You are a wonderful woman. I mention my wife's name anywhere I go. I talk about her anytime. And the reason I do this is because, you see, my wife is humble. I must be honest. There, there, there is one thing about my wife that I can't take away from her. She is humble. I love it. Yes, I know what I'm saying. Can your husband say this about you? Can a man stand behind? somewhere watch you and say this woman is humble and therefore i'm going to give myself to her okay pastor ken is saying especially if she's a bit educated or holds a better certificate or degree than the man yes that is true that there are also women like that when they are more educated than the men they want to overexert themselves and unable to humble themselves that is very true but not all of them anyway not all of them but i've seen also that there are some women, when they end better than the men, they don't want to humble themselves. Don't let your financial standard make you to exalt yourself. Do you know that there are some women who are not married because they feel they are so educated that the man who wants to marry them is not their class. This class thing is causing a lot of women to have problems. Some women, they want to marry a particular kind of men. For example, I want a doctor. I want a teacher for one point. They are nine and ten, but we did. They don't usually mention teacher that I want to marry teacher or anyway, that is a joke. But, but there are women who have lifted their bars. They want to marry a particular kind of man. And that kind of bar lifting has caused them to find it difficult to marry. And when they reach certain age, then they come to a point we call the Ameya Biyamepe. You see, don't let, don't, don't over-exalt yourself to the point that when the age has caught up with you, now you want to settle with just anybody. I know not everybody will be happy with this truth, but it's a fact. I can't help, you know, but say it just as it is. So lady, come down from your Horses, calm down, calm down. Don't overrate yourself, okay? Yes. When you're going to marry a man, the man must be ambitious. Ambitious, he must have a vision. He must respect and honor you. But don't overrate yourself, okay? Don't overrate yourself. Pastor Ken commented on the service too. Yes, bitter truth. Service, 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 service. Service import is important. Uh, this is where we are going to come. Uh, uh, this is where we are going to end. I want to pray for some women. I want to pray for you. I don't want you to continue to live in this life. Some, some of you, you have done everything you want to do or you have to do. You have sacrificed, you have the humility, you fear God, you respect, and yet you are not married. It is not everything that happens just based on principles. There are some, base, some truth that transcend anything a man does. And that is why in life you need favor. That is why you also need grace. In fact, marriage, I have always said it, it, it depends seriously on grace. Because somebody can just meet, you know, the person, an angel. I mean, when I say an angel, somebody can meet the right person. I don't want to use the word by accident. And they will marry and be happy and somebody would not. There are some people who are even at the, 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 the red light. When I say red light, what I mean is, uh, let, me use, let me be plain. Some prostitutes have married and they have good marriage. How did that happen? And there are people who are praying at Atria, who are fasting and they are not yet married. There are people who are sowing seed, who are in the church. What causes this difference? What happens? Sometimes it baffles my mind. And I know a lot of women have done everything they have to do and it's not just going right. What I want to do right now is to pray for you that no matter the situation and circumstances, the grace of God should come upon you and 
open door for you. Jesus said, lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Where is evil? Evil is a human being. In the same way, good is in a human being. So may the Lord lead you to the right man. And may you be married. I want to come for your wedding. The Lord bless you. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your children. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for such a time as this. Thank you for this message. I pray for your children in the name of Jesus. Whoever is hearing my voice at this moment, every woman who wants to marry, Father, whatever the challenge is, I take it away in the name of Jesus. I prophesy that by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the door of marriage is open for your daughter. Your daughter will be married in the name of Jesus. I prophesy that it will come to pass in the next two months, the next three months, next year. Even this year will not end. The door will open. Thank you and I call it down. I pray for everybody and I pray for every man who is not also married. And I ask that you open door and give grace that your children will joyfully marry and enjoy their marriage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. God bless you, everybody. Um, I will encourage you to continue to, you know, be with Chan, uh, Canal TV. The Lord bless you. My name is Apostle Abeku Okai. This is your marriage classroom. We meet again next week. Stay with us. Bye-bye. If you want the best and you want to be blessed, we will be catching up on you.